Well, back on the bench today, we have four new chassis that were sent in. We have two K7000s, a U5000, and a 7400. So we'll pick one of these at random. I just did uh, two 7000s, so we'll kind of leave the two 7000s to the, the end of this four. This will be a four video series. This will be video one, and then next, you know, two, three, and four will be the next three in the series, so four together. Uh, so we'll do this one as the first one, and we'll pick, um, let's do the K7400 first, because uh, it's going to be easier than the 5000. And the 7000s shouldn't be too difficult either, so what we'll do is we'll put the 7000s aside along with the 5000. These were all sent to me by the same person. They all have their own individual issues, of course. And we'll start with the 7400. So let's get the camera on the overhead and take a look at this and see what we got. Okay, so here we have everything unboxed, and it came with three vertical ICs, and there is a note here. And it says, K7400 uh, from Ms. Pack Gal, I guess Ms. Pack Gal, I got the reunion cabinet. This would run for good good for 10 minutes, and then center line, no, no, uh, f no flexion, I guess that means deflection, um, over. Changed 1771. I imagine that's the vertical IC, and now just center line. Uh, three extra chips in box one new and two out of the 74. Okay, well, so I got looks like a new one and two used ones. But the vertical collapse on these isn't too hard to troubleshoot. There is a 25 volt reference that has to get to the vertical IC. If it's missing a 25 volt reference, it won't have vertical deflection. And it's usually only three or four possibilities for that. Um, if it does have 25 volt reference, I point to here because I'll show you in a second where to read it at. If it does have 25 volt reference, then it's usually the IC. If it doesn't have 25 volt reference, it's something else. Oops, sorry, it's something else. And I'll show you what to check because it's very easy to troubleshoot. I say that relatively speaking because I don't know what's wrong. Uh, the caps all look original. Uh, well, I'll, well, except for a couple here. Um, let's see. Well, that Our G2 wire is not hooked up to the neck board. I don't know if that possibly could have been an issue. Probably came off in handling. Uh, but there is, see how the glue is missing off of this cap and the glue is missing off of this cap. But on this cap it's not. You can still see the glue on this cap here. If I can get it in the light here, sorry. The glue is still on this cap and the glue is still on the bipolar cap here. So some caps have been changed, like this one has not. So some have been changed, some haven't. I don't know what the idea behind strate uh, strategically replacing the caps are, but I'd just do done all of them if I had it out and was working on it. Um, I, we don't need to worry about it not powering up because obviously it does. It's just vertical collapse. But again, if Q703 is bad, open, shorted, what have you, the chassis will be completely, totally dead. No signs of life, no ticking, no nothing. And kind of same for the, the vertical, I'm sorry, the vertical ICs over here, the um, switch mode power supply chip. If this is bad, you won't have anything going on in the power supply section and it will be dead as well. So a couple things to note, if you have it completely, totally dead, K7400, K7500, U2000, U5000, Make sure your Q703 and your vertical, or I did it again, <laughs> your uh, switch mode power supply chip is good. Uh, usually, if you have a problem in the power supply section, I would check R103, um, is it? R104. R104, if this is out of tolerance or out of spec, uh, your power supply will be dead as well. So this is a very easy way to test. If you test R104 and it doesn't read 10K ohm, if it reads way out of spec, then there's something in the circuit that's bad. If this reads 10k ohm, then you can usually, relatively speaking, rule out everything in the power supply section with the exception of the chip. Uh, you can rule all this stuff out here as having something shorted or open if this reads good, because nine times out of ten, if this reads bad, something in the power supply section took it out. So if it reads good, you can usually bet something here is, is everything here is okay. So just wanted to point that out. But back to the topic here, so, okay. The 30 volt reference, they call it 30 volts in the manual, but it's actually 25, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's R303. There's a diode right underneath it. I think it's D302. Uh, D302, R303, and 
D603. There's a diode, a diode right here you can see. Or maybe you can't. There's a diode right here. D603, D302, and R303. If any of those three components are bad, you're not going to have your 25 volt reference. And you can measure that right here on this pin. If we look, you can see it says, mm, focus up, come on. There you go. Uh, TP206 plus 25 volts. So this is your 25 volt reference pin. If you're missing 25 volts off this pin, your vertical IC over here will have no deflection power. So that's what we need to find out. So like I say, those three components should be good. If any of those are bad, you're not going to have 25 volts. So let's test those out just to see what we have. They should be good. We'll go to ohms and we'll test our leads. Leads are good. So R303 in circuit is should be 1.2, 1.5. So that's good. So R303 isn't the problem. Uh, let's go to D302. Uh, let's make sure I'm reading it correctly. Keep going, keep going. There we go. 0.442. So D302 is good. Our D603. We'll check that one. That's good. So it'll you'll read it. It'll, it reads both ways because it's going through other components. Uh, but for the most part, when you read it correctly with your negative on the cathode, with the side with the stripe, and positive on the side without the stripe on the anode, uh, you read your 0.5. So our uh, D603 in theory is good. We, we would need to remove it from the circuit to verify it correctly, but it's not shorted. So that's what we're checking to make sure that it's not shorted. Diodes either open or short. They're not, um, you know, they're going to short more than they're going to open. Uh, so, well, that's kind of a disheartening news because it's usually just one of those three components. It looks like someone's replaced the flyback. Let's inspect the bottom side of the chassis. Um, let's see. Yeah, see there's flux all over it. So obviously the flyback's been replaced, but it doesn't look like any other work has been done. Uh, could be cold solder joint, but everything looks okay. Uh, it could be a it could be a broken pot or a bad connection on the remote board from the remote board here to the remote board. We could there could be a possible uh, bad cap or bad cap. I'm sorry, bad uh, pot. We could have a broken vertical size pot or a broken uh, vertical hold pot, a vertical position. But they don't look broken. We could test them, but. Um, vertical, okay, height. No, is that, the pots all look okay. Uh, let's check to make sure none of the solder joints are bad. No, uh, they're they're pretty oxidized, but I don't see any cracks or breaks. So I'm going to kind of rule out the remote board here for the moment. So we'll just put this back in. Alright, we can reseat this connector. Uh, okay, well, interesting. So I guess uh, with those three components checking good and the vertical IC already having been replaced, we can power it up and see if we get anything on the 25 volt reference. If we do, the vertical IC is probably the cause. Uh, solder job here is it not too I don't see any I don't see any uh, solder bridges and even if the vertical IC was completely out of the circuit you should still get your 25 volts 25 volts is coming from else, elsewhere on the chassis so even if this was removed you should still have 25 volts on the 25 volt reference but I just there's a solder ball hanging out here that shouldn't be there. If you can see that right there, that needs to go away. All right, but the solder work doesn't look too bad. Uh, so I guess what we'll do is we will put, let's get a picture tube and hook it up and see if we get our 25 volt reference. If we don't, we'll have to troubleshoot further. But usually it's one of those three components here. R303, D302, or R of or D603. 
with those all checking good, of course we'll have to see if uh, it's something else. So let's get it turned on and see if we even get our 25 volt reference. If we do, we can re worry about replacing the vertical IC or maybe that's the cause. If we don't get 25 volt reference, we'll have to troubleshoot further. So let's get it on a picture tube, turn it on and see what we get. Stand by. Well, we're all set up, ready to go. I have the chassis on a K7000 tube and frame. It's absolutely 100% compatible, so we can use this for testing. So this is just kind of sitting here precariously, but it is safe. It's not going to short out or anything. So we have that set up, ready to go. I have the meter set up, uh, reading to read off the 25 volt reference pin to see if we have any voltage. First, we need to turn it on and see if it's actually collapsed. If it is collapsed, we need to see if we have our 25 volt reference. If we do, then it's likely there's something with wrong with the vertical IC or the caps in that area. If we don't have our 25 volts, we'll have to trace the system back and figure it out. But usually when you're missing your 25 volts, it's going to be R303 or something over here coming off the flyback. So we'll have to turn it on here and see if it, A, if it is collapsed, and B, if it is, if we have 25 volts, and go from there. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, fired right up. We don't have any voltage, so I'm not hopeful here. Oh, I don't have any signal. <laughs> We're not set up. Um, let's turn it back off. Always forget something, I tell you. Uh, okay, plug in my video here. And our sink. Set this back there. Turn this on. Okay, now let's try it. Turn it back on. Okay, it came back on, still no 25 volts, and there you go, <laughs> collapsed. So, yep, definitely have an issue. This is the problem, we don't have 25 volts. So if there's no 25 volts getting to the IC, it's not going to give us any vertical deflection. So that's our problem. Let's turn it off before we do any damage. So now we got to figure out, since our R303 and diode were good and D603 were good, we got to figure out why we're not getting our 25 volts. It could be a bad capacitor, especially since these are all original for the most part. So let's see if we can find a faulty component. If not, we'll have to probably do a cap kit and then see where we're at from there. Uh, but we should be able to figure it out. I don't think a cap is going to cause it to not have the 25 volts unless the cap is completely bad. But uh, you never know. Something else we can test while we're here is our B+. So let's let's clamp on our B plus reading just to it should be 117 or somewhere close to that so let's see what that reads turn this back on uh, 118.7 close enough not really anything to worry about I'm not going to be able to even turn the pot anyway someone's some kind of person dabbed hot glue on top of the factory glue so made it even more difficult but with it being 118 that's not really that too big of a deal and of course will still collapse so Let's see if we can figure out what's wrong in the circuit for the, tw the 25 volts and kind of go from there. So stand by. Well, I did a little troubleshooting and I think I found the problem. So if we follow the circuit here, oh, it's a very simple circuit. Uh, the 30 volt reference comes right out of the flyback on this pin here. This pin here goes over to this lead of our 303. Three, so you follow it through this way. It comes out. It goes right to this leg of R303, which comes over to here, which then in turn goes over across the diode to this yellow wire. All the yellow wire to here. You can follow the pathway from the yellow wire right along this trace to this to the this leg here of this resistor. From this resistor across the jumper straight to the test point. So if there's no voltage at this test point, it's either going to be the flyback, this resistor, this diode, the connection on this wire, or the connection on this jumper, or this resistor. Well, it just so happens that this resistor was reading 240 ohms or something in circuit, but if I remove it from the circuit, and I put my leads on here, And we put this lead here and this lead here. It is open. Let me zoom out a bit. You can see here, oh, 
that resistor is completely totally open. <laughs> There's our problem. Uh, so it's not you can't always test or you can't always assume that resistors and components are good in circuit. You have to remove them from the circuit to test them properly, especially resistors. So if we get rid of our our actual jumpers here and just go right to testing this, let's get uh, something else flat to put this on. Do I have anything flat? I can list here we go. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. We've got our two leads here. And we touch them together, we know our leads are good, 0 0.2. And if we touch our resistor legs, completely, totally open. So there's our problem. Pretty sure, at least it's one step in the right direction. I don't have another one. I'll have to find, I'll have to look through the manual and see what that's supposed to read, R402. How did I? There it is. R402, this guy here. I'll have to read through the manual and see what that's supposed to read. And then I'll get one and put it in circuit. But you can you see there as we traced out the circuit, it's very simple. It comes out, goes through these two components, across the wire, straight through R402, right to the test point. So with this being open, almost guaranteed this is the problem. Very, un, very unusual. I don't think I've ever seen this be the problem. It's almost always, in my experience, it's been... R303, D302, or R60, or I'm sorry, D603. I've never, or the IC, but without having without having no 25 volts here at the test point, it's very easy to test the circuit and trace it out. Now on the um, on the U2000, the K7500, and the U5000, I'm pretty sure that this test point is actually over here, right there, and it says 30 volts. So even though on those chassis it says 30 volts, it's actually 25, just like this one, but on the 7400 it's uh, right here on this one. So let's get this, find out what this is supposed to be, replace it, and then we'll hook it back up and see if we get our 25 volts. So stand by. So I looked through my stash and couldn't find any K7400 parts boards, but I had a, a couple of the U5000s. So I robbed the resistor. R402 is supposed to be a 3.9 ohm 1 watt resistor but as you can see it's open completely open like we showed before and that's why I robbed this one which was in the R823 location and it's a one and a half watt and it's 2 ohms so it should be this should be 3.9 and I got one that's 2 so it's not exactly correct but it should work or what we need to do just for testing and I'll get the correct one installed at a later point. Uh, I'll find one somewhere and before I send it back to the actual owner I'll make sure to put the correct one in but for now for testing I should be able to install this one and at least see if we get our 25 volts. This should serve its purpose for just for testing for getting this up <laughs> uh, getting it up and running. There we go. So let me get this installed uh, again it just goes right here in R402 location right there and then we'll turn it on and see if we get our 25 volts and if we have vertical deflection. So stand by. Okay, all set up, ready to go. We have our meter hooked up to measure our 25 volts in case it comes on. And we have our resistor replaced just temporarily for testing. R402. And of course we have our ground. We're all hooked up, ready to go. So let's turn on our test pattern generator. And here we go. Do we get, oh, sorry. Do we get uh, 25 volts? Let's see. We do. Do we have full image? No, we don't. <laughs> well, we're getting closer. We got our 25 volt reference now, but we still have our collapse. So I think, well, well, I guess probably what happened was is that resistor opened up and it could have taken out the vertical IC. So now that we have our 25 volts, we're back to the original issue of if you have the 25 volts, it's usually the vertical IC. If you're missing the 25 volts, it's one of the other components, DR303, D302, or D603. In this instance, it was R402 causing the missing voltage. But now that we have our voltage and we still have a collapse, it's most likely the, the IC. So let's get the IC replaced with the new one that the customer included and see what happens at that point. So hang on one moment. Alright, so we got the new vertical IC replaced. 
that's the new one installed the old ones right here and it had a insulator here the insulator is not needed or not required on this particular chip the insulator isn't needed so we didn't put it back in but the new ones installed and I got everything hooked up ready to go let's turn this on and fingers crossed I'll bet you that fixes it because this being open probably did something to the vertical IC which took out the original one why this opened up I don't know but it opened up and it probably took out the original and the owner put a new one in and it didn't fix it because this was still open so after changing this out in the vertical IC I'm confident that it'll work uh, but I have not turned it on yet I want to share the knowledge with you guys at the same time if it works or not so let's turn it on and see if it does in fact work okay power it on that's always good yes <laughs> gotta do some adjustments here it seems somewhat centered but obviously vertical hold there it is does that work that does work well we're backwards but for this purpose of this doesn't matter uh, do we have adjustments for width uh, we do and well, each position is not quite good let's go here width we got well it's as wide as it gets we can adjust the uh, H width coil. We can, we can adjust the width coil. Sorry, I was thinking of something else while I was coming up with that, trying to recall that word or that phrase. Let's do vertical size. Okay, that works. Vertical position. Vertical size to stretch it out. That's good. Yeah, well, hot dog. There you have it. Of course, I got to flip. We can flip the. Let's see, horizontal is the red and the blue. You can see the red and the blue horizontal. We got this backwards. So if we just turn this off and flip it around here. Oh, that resistor was hot already. Flip this around the other way. And hook this up. Got it. Okay, make sure we're still safe and secure. All right, so now we should be correct. Let's turn this back on. Yes. Sweetness. Sweetness. Uh, we can adjust our focus a bit. Not that it matters on this tube because it's going to be changing. But right there looks good. Yep. Well, hot diggity and shazam. Let's scroll through. We got RGB. Crosshair. Yeah, another one successfully resurrected. Of course, all the caps are original, but it does have a good image, so there's no real reason to replace the caps if the image is good. You can do a preventive maintenance by changing them, but again, it's not really wise to change parts that are working. Uh, but yeah, it's good. So I guess to recap, no pun intended, we had a bad R402, which took out the original... Well, I don't know if it took it out, but it's probably part of the cause of the failure of the original one, which may not have even been failed. To be, to be quite honest, I don't know what took out R402. I still need to put the correct rating in there of 3.9. This one was 2 ohms. Uh, like I say, it'll work for this instance. Obviously, it does, but it needs to be 3.9. So I'll change it out for what the correct one when I get a chance before sending it back. But it's quite possible that it simply failed, and the original uh, vertical IC was probably actually okay. I can't say, but that was the failure point was R402, and I, I've said before it's usually R4, or R303, D302, or D603. As I've mentioned, I think probably five times now. <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, you know, redundancy is probably a better than not repeating enough. So yep, yeah, that was the issue R402. So uh, up and running. I'm going to go through and make sure nothing needs reflowed. I'm going to inspect the neck board and make sure it doesn't need any reflow or rework that's common with these. I don't think that it does, but I'll go through and verify all that. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, getting it resurrected, it's, it has been accomplished and it's working great. And thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe if you want. i got three more to do after this one. So stay tuned for the next video in this series, which will probably be the uh, U5000. And then we'll do the remaining 2K7000. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again, and we'll see you then.